I'm Wasteland Firebird, and I'm at one of the biggest Ford Falcon collections in the world. Today we are in Perth, Western Australia, and thank you so much to Glenn, our host, who has directed us where to go and shown us all the cool things in Perth. Frank Seychelles, I'm not sure I'm saying that right, but Frank Seychelles was a dealer and a racer and a mechanic from the 50s up until the day he died in 2017. And for 60 years, he worked out of this building. Kelly. Okay, well, I'm going to redo that then. Okay. Um, we were just excited to find this place, and I'm doing just all the interesting cars of Perth. Any other questions I had? That was the big one, is how to say his name. But I read up on him. He was a dealer. He was a racer. He was a mechanic. 60 years out of this location. Well, so I guess then that's the next question, is like, why is it preserved? Okay, his wife uh, decide, decided to keep the place as a museum, almost. Oh, yeah. Thank her for us, because it's beautiful. You know, it's a piece of history. And thank you so much to the grandson of the former owner of this place because he happened to stop by as we were here peeking in through the glass he even let us look around inside but we can't take the camera in and he told us how to say Frank Chakelli's name this place looks like a time capsule Fab car. I hear there is something inside of this building that I've never seen before. And you may never have seen before either. There is a Morgan back here. I've never seen a Morgan before. They were famous for having wood as part of their structure because they wanted to keep this old design. And they have. And you could even get these in Australia. I don't know how many of them they sold here, but they, they did sell a few in Australia. But as someone from the United States, I've never seen anything like this. I feel like Richard Hammond on Christmas right now. It's the Morgan Arrow 8. I just love the respect for the past, the respect for history. If something was fine the way it was, don't change it. And so we end up with a car that looks like it could have maybe been designed in the 20s, but also was just built yesterday. And over here, there's something else, which I had done a little bit of research into when I heard that this might be here too. There's over here a De Tommaso Guara, okay? And I'm going to be very careful. I'm not going to let myself scratch this thing. There were only 52 of these ever made in the whole world. They made them for 10 years, and they only made 52 of them. I thought De Tommaso went out of business in the 70s because in the United States, all we got was the Mangusta and the Pantera. This was the last car that was made under the supervision of Alejandro de Tomaso. Thumbs all the way up. Thumbs all the way up. Two thumbs up. Found another little spot where we might be able to look into a window, see some cool stuff. Now we're outside of Perth at a place called Valley Social where they apparently have a lot of big fancy car meets, but unfortunately there's no car meets today. But the reason I'm mentioning them is we might actually be able to get a free lunch here. We may be paying for it, I'm not sure, but it looks like a delicious lunch might be awaiting us. Ford Falcon Ute XR8. 
Boss 260 in an amazing color of yellow. There you go. How do I drink this thing? Just get it on your nose? Where's our straw? I don't drink, so they've made me a non-alcoholic something or other. That's really good. Thank you so much. Brisket burger, pork knuckle, and battered fish. And this is where you get to score that. Oh, because uh, because I'm from Absolutely. the United States. I spent a lot of time in Texas. So does this meet a Texan's expectations of a proper brisket? Absolutely. It's amazing. largest glass market brewery and kettle in the southern hemisphere that brews a thousand litres of beer uh, in 10 hours and normal breweries you'd need three brewers working all day to produce that sort of beer uh, but because this is computerized all the machinery comes straight from germany uh, one brewer can smash out that much beer and be home by lunchtime and we um, brew seven different types of hemp infused beer and we brew them straight into these big ass stainless steel tanks that are jacket cool and this whole room is a massive cool room. It's really cool because you can feed straight from these tanks to the actual brew lines without the need for double handling. So all that beer it doesn't have preservatives in and it's super cold and because it's not handled very much it's it's got, got generates its own CO2 so the head on the beer sits there and lasts forever like uh, unlike a lot of other beer which they just disappear straight away. Uh, and these are these are really massive they're a thousand litres so we've got some um, Jumbo 2,000 litre ones there, and normal keg of beer is about 50 litres, so it's pretty much 20 kegs of beer before you need to change the tank. I think I heard him lock the door. Yeah, probably because they saw us coming. Yeah. Oh, the other door's open. <laughs> oh, there you open. I thought you opened a four. The sign lies. They wouldn't let us in, so we're looking through the windows. Glenn has a couple interesting cars to show us too, including a pink wrapped Nissan GTR. GTR taillights make the best thumbnails. The other thing though is what I want to talk about is this car over here. So this is a 1993 Nissan GTR R32, also known as Godzilla. This is a car that was originally only sold in Japan and Australia. The ones in Australia were only sold to enable them to compete in motorsport and they absolutely dominated for a number of years until the rules were changed and they were excluded. I just know that I loved playing them in Gran Turismo in the 90s. But yeah, what I find most interesting is sold in Japan and Australia only because I know I have friends in the US that are like, oh my god, if only. Today we're in a semi-secret location in Western Australia. It's not that secret, but I don't know if he wants me to tell you about it. Let's put it that way. We are gonna see the largest Ford Falcon collection in the world. The largest Ford Falcon collection in the Southern Hemisphere. Something like that. Do you want me to publicize your, this place or do you want me to keep it like secret? We don't usually um, put the address online, but um, yeah. we'll put the link like we've got a um, fordfarm.com.au right right so people can book to come and we usually charged twenty dollars a head and it goes to make a wish foundation it used to be coins and now it's like inf inflation <laughs> yeah. and now you got to put the all right well, this car here this 32 this actually won best street ride across australia in 1965. dad bought it about 1973. when we started the motor wrecking yard we sold this car and it disappeared we didn't see it for, oh, it must have been 40 years. <laughs> like, and I found it um, in South Australia, but it was back to nothing like you see here. And uh, we rebuilt the whole car all over again. The funniest part about these cars now is that all those weird colours were always, you know, people say, oh, there was only three of my cars ever made. 
because back when it was new, everybody went, who wants that color? You know, now it's put on a pedestal. Yeah, now, so now when people get their car repainted, they do them in the crazy colors. Yeah, yeah and yeah, so yeah. It's the question, is that the original color? So this one was originally this color. That's exactly how it was. Yeah. Um, have you ever heard of Slim Dusty? I've heard of him, yeah, he yeah. does the music like, um, oh, yeah. it's, g'day, g'day, yeah. how are you going, right? Yeah, so he had the exact same combination as a car. Does the windshield pop up? Yeah, that's your, that's your air conditioning, your windscreen winds out to let air in. They were actually built in 38 and they stopped for 10 years because of the war. Um, so by the time they came out, they were really outdated. But now, of course, all these years later, they've come back to cool because look at them. And that's the, you know, early V8 side valve motor and we put twin carbies on it and, you know, potted her up a little bit. All the cars in the shed, do they run? Yes. Every single car runs? Yeah, so there's a couple, there's a few in this shed that, you know, you'd have to prime the fuel up and that sort of stuff because they run back to the tank. But we drove everything in here, everything drove. Back in the old days, they wouldn't let us license anything left hand drive, so they had to be converted to be on the street here. Mm -hmm. They've changed the rules since, but... Yeah, so the rule I think now is if it's over 25 years, you don't have to move the steering wheel? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, but, but now they've brought out a new rule again that if it's a super rare car, you can leave them left hand drive okay. and license them. Like we've got a 2006 GT Ford over there. Okay. That's left hand drive. When we brought it into the country, we could only bring it as view only because we weren't going to convert it because it would wreck the car. You know? Now they've brought out this new law and we said, well, how about letting us license that? And they said, it's rare enough, but to license it, you've got to take it out of the country and back and then we'll license it. <laughs> That's ridiculous. That makes perfect sense. That's like a 1962 Falcon. That The guy that we, we that uh, was a deceased auction that was sold at. Mm -hmm. So the guy had that one car his entire life. Oh, wow. That's the best. Like the, the books that were in the dash, with the address that the car was picked up from. So yeah. it never moved, and he had one car through his entire life. I love that. And that so is this is what I think of when I think of a Ford Falcon. Yep. This is when they stopped. In, in the US, this was the last we ever saw of the Ford Falcon. So this Ford Zephyr, he said, don't shoot this one, it's ugly. But now I've started to become more fascinated with this one. Fire and rust are both oxidization processes, which means that this car is actually on fire in slow motion. But yeah, I think these are pretty much my favorites that I've seen of the Ford Falcons. This Cobra? Cobras, um, to die-hard Ford fans, weren't the be-all and end-all because these were the last ones that came out with a lot of pollution on the engine, so it took power out of the car. Mm -hmm. um, in the last probably 10 years they've gone ridiculous in price. Guys that typically typically like Fords and Holdens love Cobras. Uh -huh. Real die-hard Ford guys, it's always XYs, XWs, the older, tougher. Then they went to Bathurst, which is our biggest race here. Um, you know, it's a thousand kilometre race and they came one, two and went over the finish line together and you know, that's I've a, seen that. That yep. kind of bumped them up a fair bit. I owned a 1975 Pontiac Firebird. Yep. That was the first year they put the catalytic converters on the cars. Yep. And so it's people might ask me, well, that, that's the slower Firebird. And I like the wraparound back glass that was also introduced in 1975. And I love the color stellar blue. And 1976, the country's bicentennial was coming up. And so the guy had special ordered this car in blue and a red and white interior. And it has the massive blue bird on the hood. GM just kept going with the crazy, great looking car designs through the 70s, yeah. even though the cars weren't so fast later in the 70s. And I don't care. I mean, I, that's what I grew up as a kid looking at. Like, I didn't care how fast it was. I just looked at it and said, I want a giant bird on my hood when I grow up. So is this the Barra motor? Yes. Okay. So the, Inline six. Really, it was the engine that brought kids back into cars for Ford because they're such a small engine and they make so much power. Um, so I thought I'd keep a couple of them because most of them are just boy racer cars that get trashed. These are both under 30,000 kilometers. I like boy racer style cars, yeah. but I personally don't really want to modify them that much. Like maybe make them go a little faster, but I don't like to change the looks of a car. Like I, I kind of like the way a car looked from the factory. I like the idea that a bunch of designers focused on what colors are we going to paint it, how are we going to make the lines of this car look, and then you get this time capsule, and if, if you preserve that, it's a time capsule, but if you, if you ruin it, it becomes a weird sort of amalgamation of a bunch of different time periods, and you kind of lose some of the car's soul. 
Yeah, but there's also the other side of it. If you're into race car stuff, um, a friend of mine that runs Extreme Ford Tuning in Midland, who does all my tuning stuff, he, uh, he's got one of these making 1,200 horsepower. There's just horses for courses. Yeah, and there's also some truth to the idea that, like, a 30s car that's been hot rodded in the 50s, I would love something like that. Because to me, it gets old enough where it's like, even though it's been heavily hot rodded, that's now its own period. Yep. But see, that same thing will happen with the cars of today. Eventually, 50 years from now, we'll be like, oh, it's, this is very much in the style of a 90s Honda Civic hatchback that was customized in the 2000s. You know, and so I should really maybe appreciate that more. This is just an XY panel van, which is the same model as the most popular GT. This guy ordered this, this color, V8 manual from factory, so it cost double the price of a standard one. It was like, when I was about seven or eight, he used to call in to work, we sponsored him. There's some pictures up on the wall there. This was one of the fastest cars in WA, street car. He used to drive it down to the track every week. It went, uh, I'm pretty sure it was 12.6 in 1976. It's like, let's buy a station wagon and have it be a hot rod. That was not something that was done commonly in the US at all. Here the panel vans really have this cachet where people are enthusiastic about them and in the US you'd buy the big, heavy, big tall vans yeah. and people wouldn't really think of drag racing those normally. Whereas this, <laughs> you can drag race it. Yeah, it's yeah. a station wagon, you can drag race. Yeah, well there used to be a famous sticker that was always on the back of these cars. And, you know, if, um, if the vans rock and don't bother knocking. Uh, we had this Painted up this mural and Alan Moffat actually came and signed the wall um, in 71. He won Bathurst by over a lap, which is incredible. I think the last 10 years that, you know, it's been won by seconds or parts of a second. So to win by a complete lap is pretty impressive. Peter Brock's memorial is in Perth somewhere. It's only 10 minutes five from here. This car is just a hand-built replica, you know, because obviously an original one in Australia is about $2 million. <laughs> yeah, I was wondering. The thing with Cobras, though, is they're like that everywhere. It's very often a replica, but the replicas are as good or better than the oh, originals. I mean, you can see all the scenes where they've rolled each panel and put it together, and uh -huh. there's so much work in this car. And yeah. They've done a beautiful job. When you drive it up the road, it's a big block manual, and it feels like you're sitting in a Coke can. You know, it's not the safest car that I've ever... That was the whole point. That was the original idea of making the lightest car you could make with the biggest engine you could put in it. It's yeah. still a rare formula. Most people do not have the courage to attempt it or to drive it. Yeah, well, Carol Shelby made two supercharged ones when he made these cars, and they gave it to some movie star, and he gave it back and said, no. <laughs> and the guy that brought it off the movie star died in it. Mustang, Mustang, Mustang. Let's get out of this place. This fire truck actually works. Yeah, yeah, so it's uh, the built-in early 90s at a cost of over a million dollars. You got this to what? Defend this place against yeah, yeah, fire? Yeah. I, I, I admire your devotion to properly curating these pieces of history that will hopefully outlast all of us. When we had the big fire, which was only a kilometer and a half away, the first thing that happened, we lost all power. All of our water is on electric pumps. No water. And the fire was still a kilometer and a half away. but. We were basically sitting ducks, really. I mean, we have a lot of grass around all the buildings, but that fire just ran across paddocks like it was 80 people lost their houses. So I think you're the only car collector I've ever known or heard of that has prepared for the disasters that you've prepared for by owning a fire truck. Restaurant in Midland called Jimmy Dean's. Um, we, when it closed down, we got hold of the owners of it and uh, bought all the the bays and retrimmed them all and got all the lights out of the place and just reset them up again. I absolutely love it. I've been seeking out old buildings as well as old cars. Yeah. Because I think the 20th century was just the best time that humanity ever did or ever will experience. And so to preserve anything from the 20th century is, to me, very important. <laughs> yeah, you used to be able to put money into a vending machine and get cigarettes and now they I worried that kids would put the money in. Okay. This is the first GT Falcon made in Australia and it works its way around to every model that Ford had. 
ending with the GDF, which was the last range of GTs that Ford ever made. That car's 498 out of 500. So this could have been the third to the last Ford V8 ever made? Yep. Truly the last of the V8s. Yeah. So the XY Falcon was the fastest four-door saloon car in the world for a number of years. Alan Moffat said the cars didn't particularly stop very well, they didn't handle very well, but Ford were really good at finding brave drivers. They had plenty of power. I love the Super Roo logos on these. They're cool, aren't they? Yeah. Like, US cars had their own little cartoon characters on them, which yeah. I always just loved, especially as a kid. It feels like, I guess that's something about this that maybe car makers don't even think of anymore. Kids aren't even that much into cars, but when I was growing up, the fact that a car had a cartoon character on it just made me say, I want that car when yeah. I grow up, or the big firebird on the hood. Yeah. And then I got that car eventually. I mean, it's like a long-term investment when you put a cartoon character on your well, car. One, the one that comes to mind is a roadrunner, you know? That's what I'm talking about. <laughs> exactly what I'm talking about. But yeah. you guys had your own cartoon characters. So when I first came to Australia, and I looked down, and I saw the Subaru, I'm like, oh my god, there's a kangaroo with like an engine sticking out of it. And then I just, I imagine what it would have been like to grow up in Australia. And to see that for the first time when you're five years old. And to want that car when you grow up. This is truly a modern classic. It's one of the few cars where it either held its value or increased in value from the moment it was released. Ford bring out a car and they say we're going to make 250 of them. And that's done. And that's the case with those two GTs there. There were only 250 of them made each. So yeah, I've never seen anything like this. So these grill pieces, this came stock like yeah, this? Yes, everything it, on that car is dead stock. It looks like a custom grill you could buy. We bought that car brand new. Yeah, that's what I was talking about. One of the best things about this place is walking around and noticing the things that are not on display, they're sculptures. There really is something special about a car. It is a sculpture, but it really is just as beautiful when it decays as it is when it's perfectly shiny and new. I don't think I would say that about any other type of sculpture. All right, this is the final building, so I'm expecting to see some cooler, crazier stuff in here too. There's a Ferrari and a dragster to get started here. I know which one in this building I want to ask you about first. De Tommaso. I thought they stopped making cars in the 70s. They used all Australian Ford running gear. You know, um, that's why it interested us. Um, the Pantera is the most well-known car with the engine in the back and all the rest of it. Well, this is just like ugly brother. I always wanted to build one out of, you know, off the planet car, and that was it. You know, like a, the old sled, 49 Mercury. Um, there's like $10,000 worth of gold plating in that car. It's got a 671 blower on it, 410 cubic inch engine. It drives like a boat, <laughs> as you'd expect, but you don't, you know, you start it up, see the shifter sticking through the window, the skull on it. It's just that sort of cool, you know? The biggest car show we have in Australia over east that I've never been to, this purple car won. So they're up to... Um, what, Summer Nats? Summer Nats. I think they're up to 34 or 35. That won Summer Nats 8. <laughs> All those years ago. Nice. And another, that's another bucket list thing is when I retire, I'm going to get that car going again. I'm going to put the stripes on it like it had when it won and just drive in there. So uh, not the next upcoming summer nets, you don't think, huh? No, it'll be the one after. Okay, because yeah. I'm going to be at the next summer nets. Everyone tells me I need to, and I'm like, I can't wait. Oh, I've always wanted to go, but running businesses and doing everything else that we do, yeah. never have the time, but the, um, they took the stripes off the car years ago, but it's still the same paint job. Oh, wow, yeah. So I'm going to get them painted back on and maybe do the colours in a pearl. You know, so they just pop a bit more. So that's another example of what I was talking about earlier. This looks very 90s to me. Yeah. So it's, in some sense, I could completely understand why they would remove the stripes because it gives it a more timeless look. Yeah. But I also understand why you say, I want to preserve this because look, this is a, a thing of the 90s and, and I like that about it. So when it got around that I brought this car in Melbourne, uh, the guy 
a guy contacted me and he said, I've got the wheels off it, the wheels that were in the magazine. Uh -huh. So I brought them, I've got them at work to swap back over. I think we need to look under the hood though because it appears that the engine is pink and purple. It's a 460 big block with a 671 on it. Uh, this was, it's called Zap's Rat. It was uh, John Zappier's car and it was the first door slammer in Australia to go eight seconds, then seven seconds, then six seconds down the quarter mile. Old style diagnostic machine. These were completely replaced by sensors and computers that are on your car. So all of this now is in your car and that's why your cars are so complicated and heavy now. So the stick shift is positioned uncomfortably near your stick if you are a male. And uh, the transmission is pretty much what you're riding on as you drive this. And the footrests are the engine block. This apparently used to go through the gold fields, pulling teeth and that sort of stuff. And uh, it's got a side valve V8 and it's manual, so it still goes pretty well. It's got all stainless steel basins and things like that in the back of it. The complaints department is just behind the driver's seat. It's got a shotgun holder. Because we drink beer most times when people are out here looking at cars. I was, you know, I had a couple and we were doing donuts in it. And I got it up on two wheels and <laughs> really glad it didn't keep going. <laughs> In the United States, we don't have any trees like this that don't have any bark. This is amazing. It's like a hairless cat. You were saying people used to come here to shear sheep? Is that what it was? Yeah, yeah. We, we just put floors over the top of it, but they used to just be the gridded floors so all the stuff could fall through. And they had all just shearing setups. Come on here. I found what I'm excited about in here Starsky and Hutch. That's probably my favorite 70s TV show. Yeah, right. That was a Ford Torino, wasn't it? Yeah. We're on one of the roads of the Targa West Tarmac Rally, which no longer happens. And there are some tire marks on the ground here, which I take as a tribute. to the memorial that's right over here. Peter Brock, king of the mountain. Thanks to Mad Skelly for the camera work. <laughs> Firebird. Firebird. 